<clears throat> listening to Corey, um, what, what strikes my mind is that we as a community and we as a, as a city, I think need to do a better job of embracing each other and trying to market it. I mean, it, it's sort of coming into my head now that as a golf destination, when you pull off the, the exits, there's very little that actually makes you think that you're ready to play golf. And so, you know, I think that, um, and I'm sure that there are other businesses out there as well that relate to it. Uh, um, there's a, there was a question, and I'm, and I'm sort of jumping the gun. And someone said, well, um, you know, what advice would you give to um, a small business person? And I was actually at first thinking more about things that um, you know, we had done just trying to survive back in, the, in 97. But what jumped into my head was businesses that probably already exist, okay? But whether they focus on their business in a way that might be able to really help um, position itself as you know, a golf destination. So an example might be someone who's in furniture, okay? And they open a furniture store because, you know, they've always wanted to have furniture, they, um, they like people, and then they open up and they have all this furniture there, and the problem is, you know, everyone has a different taste, and um, they come in there, the customer comes in there, and they want to buy something else. And they're not selling enough. And they get in this vicious circle in terms of how much inventory can they have, how does it, you know, who are the customers going to be? And um, they open in a year, and maybe they close. And I think there's a furniture store that was in Red Hills Mall that I, I, I think of. And I say to myself, you know what's interesting though? If you focus as a golf destination, and you realize how many condos there are, and that there are people who are renting condos, and I've, I've tried to, make, uh, um, to work with uh, Doug Reith, for example, where I said, you know, there's a lot of times that we're full in the hotel, and we're willing to pass on our uh, overflow, and to work with you, and to, um, you know, sell that inventory to um, through you. So it helps the person who owns the condo. It helps Doug and his uh, his agents, and it helps the city because you know if they're in the condo, most of the times they have to buy their food at. Um, at Smith's or Walmart, or even the restaurants. But you know the problem is? When they come into our site, they're really, really used to all the rooms looking the same. Okay? And so they go, well, you know, we're not sure that we want, you know, this design or that design or whatever. And it's really, really hard, I'm sure, when people buy a condo, you know, what kind of furniture they should buy. But if someone were, were an expert, and we're just visit my hotel, and both of uh, Anthony, Toadies, and Randy's hotels, and all the other hotels around, and they became the savant of all you know condominiums, and they helped someone by saying, "I know the four ways we can design um, condos, which tend to fit in really well with people who are coming on golf trips, and you know I can help you pick one that you like." But I'm telling you, it's much better if you stick with one of these four, because not everyone likes kind of the you know the doilies and whatever inside the um, the condo because they're golfers. I don't want to offend anyone who likes the doilies and the macrame, but these are golfers, okay? If someone had that business, I'm telling you, there's a lot more people to sell furniture to. So from the very beginning, you pull off the freeway. If your focus is in golf, and that, you know, I love our signs around, you know, Mesquite, but it's just dawn on me that they don't look anything like what one would have if you're coming on a golf course. And I actually, I like desert landscape because I like to waste water. But I, you, you can do it in a way that actually makes you think of golf. Maybe there was just, you know, pins inside the two sides. But from the beginning of your experience, and if you're a business person saying, how can I sell things that reinforce our brand, who's going after customers who are in town, I think you can help all of us.
I, I would agree. And I think it, it plays into a larger part. I want to kind of go back to a little bit of what I was saying in terms of getting back to the answers of how do we drive the economy. Uh, as, as a business owner, I think we understand where the city's at. And by the way, to be fair to uh, you know, Andy, Andy and Aaron down at the city, Andy Barton and Aaron Baker, they're doing a great job. They're doing their best. They've got a tough budget to deal with. The city council, and by the way, the city, but last, the city councils, I, just from my experience, for whatever this is worth, because there always seems on the blogs to be stuff going back and forth. For the most part, most everyone I've met over the years, and I've been here almost 10 years now, are pretty good, decent, and honest people. Let me say that again. Most everyone I've met are good, decent, honest people that love a ski. They may have a different vision on how to get there, and that's okay. I think, you know, some honest debate is never a bad thing. Better ideas come out of it. But the biggest challenge is understanding where you're at and saying, okay, we've got to deal with these issues. We've had some businesses that haven't made as much money that have left town for whatever reason. So what do we need to do to drive this economy forward? What are the ideas that we can do? What, you know, I, I was at in the town hall, uh, I just was a, just went about a couple months back and I, I asked uh, Andy Barton the question. I said, you know, so do you guys strategize and think about what are the key businesses? What are your core industries here? How do you sit down and, uh, and decide when you're having your meetings is there a way we can help these businesses? That doesn't mean, let me say, it doesn't mean subsidizing uh, or getting for a handout, but what are the ways that we can do that without costing us any more money? And you know, Andy's doing a terrific job of reaching out, and Tim Hacker, I thought, did a great job too. I think both, they have a different probably style, but I'll tell you what, Andy, by reaching out his community forms, I, from what I can see, are really helpful. I think they're great. That's getting information from people. Um, <coughs> But the larger question is, is what's our strategic vision of the community? And it goes back to talking about the great things we have here. We have a great golf community. Okay, of course, I'm the golf course owner. I'm going to be proud to promote our golf community. Um, Greg is, from my perspective, the best partner I could have, period. He's been a great partner. We're friends. We've worked together. Similar vision of trying to provide the best product. It's, it's been great. But how do we, in my view, if we have a great golf community, if we have great gaming, and we have lots of real estate owners, and I'm not talking about just homeowners, but lots of real estate companies here, those are three core industries. And we also have a pretty much a brand new hospital. We're getting down to brass tacks. And the questions I always have is, how are we in these meetings? Are we, you know, when you, what I would like to see, and I don't know this, but when things come up, if somebody has invested $20 million in the community, that's a good thing. That means they're here to invest. That means that they're willing to spend. Wolf Creek Golf Club, hey, we had three monsoons. We had a big greens project. We're battling through it. But you know, we're, and we're approaching the million dollar mark on our new greens, but we believe that they will be the best greens in all of the Southwest. And so somebody goes, well, why did you change the greens, you know? Because I thought we could have a better product. That's because I believe. Chad and I, as owners, believe in Wolf Creek. We believe in Mesquite as a golf destination. And we believe that there's a lot of things that, you know, we think that at the right time it's gonna be great. So what things in the community can the community do? You know, and I'm getting to a point, but I, a couple years ago we approached the water situation. And it was a hot topic around town. And to be honest with everyone in the room, this is what this forum is about. It's not to give every nice answer, but you know, the water situation was thought, of course Wolf Creek will receive a benefit if we can stay that. But the larger question is, we've got other golf courses in town and we understand what we understand what we saw was happening in Las Vegas where the water prices were so high that many of these golf courses who had well-to-do owners filing for bankruptcy and many of the homes around it suffered. And so long-term thinking from my brothers and my perspective, and I talked to Greg extensively about this, 
was we've got to set up a plan because we have seven golf courses in a town of 19,000. And we have to look at the impact if we were to raise those rates and basically what it would do to their financial credit with their own lenders, what it would do for their desire to reinvest. I mean, and thankfully, after some long discussion that with, you know, I'm gonna toot Sandra Ramaker and Carl Gustavus and work extremely hard, and Gino's been a big supporter of, of this, you know, the current council on the side, but in the water district side, and, and Ken Rock worked hard on this too, and thankfully, we got something for some long-term assurances. And I think what ultimately that transpired to for us was, we recently just got refinanced. We, my brother had paid a lot of money to get it down since we've owned the golf course. And one well, of the interesting comments for the folks that we talked to with our new lender and their regional, their pretty regional sized bank was, boy, that community is really smart. They went out and they've got their golf, their water cost in check. And so what, why is that important to the little guy? Why does that matter? You know? And so you're thinking, it goes back to my first question is, is would you invest in a business and you're year three and everyone loves you when you're there for the first first month when you write the check and you get all the codes but people that are going to give you credit are going to look at the history and you're in year three and four and the city wants to get people to invest those are the kinds of strategic plans how are we helping our core industries out you know what things are we doing to have long-term stability that doesn't mean subsidy i think during that debate i just want to make a point that there was some writer that wrote, like, had some picture that claimed that, he was, that the city was carrying the golf courses on the back. And I, and not, by the way, the writer never called any of us on the golf side. But what was interesting was the portrayal that was somehow subsidizing. And I remember turning my executive team and I said, I would just like to be able to tell the writer that when we talk about marketing mesquite, and I'll, you know, for 10 years, Wolf Creek Golf Club, as an example, has spent about three and a half million of hard advertising dollars you know, promoting obviously Wolf Creek Golf Club. But every time we promote Wolf Creek Golf Club, if you look at one of our ads, it says Mesquite, Nevada on it. It says Mesquite, Nevada on it. And I know that's just one golf course. And if you add that up to the other golf courses that advertise, the number is far greater. And then if you want to go one step further, uh, not to embarrass Gino a little bit more, but Gino put together golf, the Golf for Kids charity. Uh, that Gino, I'd like to be more involved next year, so you can see me later on that. But um, we do things here at Wolf Creek for the veterans. But those are a lot of beneficial things that provide the lifestyle here that we give back, and we do a lot of things. So from an investment perspective, you know, think about that in our planning. How do we get people to invest? What message do we send them to? To an existing business that's putting capital. Can someone from the outside, we all need more money coming in here to invest. And how do we tell these outside partners that Mesquite is here? What are they doing to help us? Not giving, what planning are they going to reassure someone who's going to, you know, bank doesn't say we're just going to give you a two year loan. They're looking at you 20 and 25 years out. Thank you. I'd like to open up to questions in the audience. We have a mic coming over to you. We have a question right back here, I believe. Yes, I have a comment. Um, we're originally from Ohio. We made a mistake when we retired, went to Florida. It took, it took us two slow years to realize that was not the resort community we wanted to be in. We traveled 48 states after that. We ended up in Mesquite, Nevada because of the great recreation, the outdoors, the gaming, uh, the type of people that are here, the positiveness, and uh, the visionary type of leadership that we've had. And with the two gentlemen sitting up front, uh, I think that they are leading the community in the right direction. It's as far as we're concerned, it's all about recreation, resort, and we are good ambassadors by telling others about the golf, 
the gaming, the uh, other amenities, me having been an educator, that's another thing I always look towards. But uh, the fire, the police protection that we have, the location is superb. I see nothing except good coming forward. We've gone through the next thing to a depression, and we're going to survive. And we need the positiveness in the community and try to forget about or uh, dismantle any negative thoughts that are going on. We're going to be better, bigger, and with leadership like the people we're speaking to, that's going to happen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We have another question. 